This is the lecture for The Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus. Uh, so our first topic is suicide. So he opens up, you, like you'll notice right when he starts in the essay, it's absurdity and suicide. And he starts talking about suicide and uh, you know whether we have reason to live. And I think you can, you can sort of get the wrong impression from that. Uh, it sort of makes the whole piece seem like it's uh, gloomy or it's uh, sort of depressive or it's uh, like a live question, like, should I really be killing myself today or something like that? It, it, that's, it's sort of not really uh, the goal. Uh, and when you get to the very end, not even the very end, but as you go through, but especially the very end, like the last sentence, <clears throat> I think it should be quite clear that he doesn't <clears throat> have a sort of gloomy outlook on life. He doesn't walk around thinking, should I kill myself in the sort of depressive sort of sense. So this is just to say, don't let yourself get in the wrong kind of mood uh, as you start to read. Uh, it starts off very uh, sad, maybe, but it, 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 get, it gets better. And I mean, to some extent, that's probably on purpose. Like he understands what it is to open up by talking about suicide like this and then end the essay the way he does. So uh, the first thing is just keep in mind sort of the whole structure of the piece and don't uh, get sucked in by first impressions in the first few paragraphs, first few pages really, which make it seem very death-centric, which it's not that death is irrelevant, but there, there's just a lot more going on. And what is that a lot more going on? So we're reading this because this unit is about uh, the meaning of life. And uh, what Camus gives us is his view on this, which is uh, known as absurdism. And so really what this essay is about, it's about absurdism. And absurdism is a view about, among other things, the meaning of life. And so uh, you're going to get that in this essay, but just to sort of set up some big pillars or some pillars to pay attention to as you read and to have some background while you read. So absurdism is an approach to the meaning of life, and specifically it's a skeptical approach to the meaning of life. So this comes out all throughout the essay, but it's strongest on pages uh, 70 to 71, in where he starts talking about absurd freedom. And so the absurdist approach to whether life has meaning, whether existence has meaning, whether this world has any meaning, he says, look, I don't know whether this world has a meaning that transcends it, but I know that I do not know that meaning, sorry, but I know that I do not know that meaning, that it's impossible for me just now to know it. So the thought is, uh, look, is there any sort of meaning to the world? Is there any sort of meaning to the universe? Great question. You can't know. Like, number one, it's a question. So he's not answering yes or no. And number two, it's always going to be a question. You're never going to solve this. This is not something we can resolve for ourselves. So uh, is there sort of any meaning out there? It's just a question mark. In this way, uh, Camus sets himself apart from uh, the existentialists, who are very similar to him in a lot of ways. But for the existentialists, the answer is no. Uh, and so you have to sort of go out and create your own meaning. Absurdism is not a sort of negative view about the meaning of life. It's a skeptical view. It just says, there's just there's no way to know. There's no way to get to that sort of thing. Whether there's a difference between skepticism and just denial of the meaning of life, I don't know. That's up to you to figure out. But uh, that's one key thing to keep in mind, which is this kind of skepticism about meaning in life, which is uh, one of the main pillars of absurdism. One of the reasons absurdism as this skeptical answer is that it's going to reject any kind of religious answer to meaning in life. So there's a brief pass passage on here about what the absurd person does when they're confronted with religion or prophet or gods or anything like that. And the thought is just no. And so uh, that's one thing to keep in mind, sort of like the basic assumption is that you will be an atheist. Like this is uh, sort of part and parcel of absurdism. We're already sort of assuming atheism in the background. Uh, whether that's a legitimate assumption or not, good question. Camus is basically thinking like, yes, like, you know, what, what are you talking about? Like gods and stuff? Like, no, there's no convincing reason to believe in any of that. And so here he's not trying to sort of argue for any of this or convince anybody of any of this. This is just like, 
you're so it's taken to be the starting point that there's no good argument for any of this stuff. Perhaps you could make a leap of faith. So this is what, for instance, uh, Kierkegaard suggests and many other religions suggest this sort of thing, which is no, you're not gonna prove it, but you can sort of have faith and uh, that will work for you. And so then there's discussion of that here, but um, the thought is like, no, we're sort of starting from this atheist perspective and then asking what should we do about life? Is there meaning to life? And then finally, a big part of absurdism is sort of where it gets its name from, this sort of the absurd, this feeling of the absurd. And so there's discussion of it all throughout the article. The main stuff is on 69, but really it's the whole article. And this is just to add on to what you find in the article, which is the, the way to think about the absurd is uh, it's kind of, it's it arises from, or it's a situation that exists because of our relation to everything, our relation to the world, our relation to ourselves, our relation to each other. Uh, and this sort of understanding this relation, oh, uh, actually, <laughs> give me, well, give me 10 seconds. Uh, understanding this relation is, uh, gives rise to the absurd, basically. Understanding this uh, relation, or yeah, this relation maybe is absurd. Uh, understanding it is uh, what triggers absurdity. Uh, and so I, whoops, I say all this, there we go. I say all this uh, because it may or may not help. Like the absurd is not, uh, I don't know. It's, it's an attitude that arises out of thinking about our relation to things. So keep that in mind as you read Camus because, you know, he says a lot of stuff about the absurd and it's hard to get a handle on it, but it might help to think about it as a relation or uh, triggered by uh, facts about our relation to things and ways that we think about our relation to things, which leads us to the next topic, which is reason. So one of the sort of drivers of the absurd, one of the reasons that we're sort of in this absurd position, one of the reasons that uh, sort of our relation to the world triggers the absurd or makes us feel the absurd. As Camus puts it, um, you know, if I were a tree among trees or a cat among cats, uh, this life would have a meaning, or rather this problem would not rise, for I should belong to this world. Uh, and it's cut off a little on the right, but no, maybe I can... Great. Uh, I should belong to this world. I should be this world to which I am now opposed by my whole consciousness and by my, and my whole insistence upon familiarity. So if you were the world, if you sort of belonged to the world, if you were part of the world the way a cat or a tree is, there wouldn't really be the absurd. The absurd would not arise for you. But that's not... Uh, the case. You are opposed to the world by your whole consciousness and your insistence upon familiarity, and specifically, this ridiculous reason is what sets me in opposition to all creation. So uh, you you sort of have the powers of reason. You are a human, and humans have reason. Cats don't have reason, Camus thinks. Trees don't have reason. We have reason, and reason sort of gives rise to the absurd. It sort of sets us apart from creation. Uh, it makes us relate to creation in this sort of way when we contemplate things. So as you'll notice as you read, the absurd isn't just like always coming in your face. Really, the absurd only arises in certain situations, and you kind of have to turn your mind upon it. You have to make use of your mind in order for reason, or in order for the absurd to bubble up. And so it's the fact that you even have this mind in the first place that allows for the absurd to occur. Um, and so that's just worth thinking about because it's not something he highlights a lot, um, but it's helpful for understanding other properties of the absurd as he talks about in the article. So that's it.